Hello makers and welcome back to Spectiva Studios. It's good to have you here. Now today I want to share with you something a little unusual. We're going to make some abstract art using uh, uh, technology and ingredient, however we want to refer to it, that you might not normally use when you're creating abstract paintings and that is rubber cement. Yeah, we're going to talk about something that's really very cool and make sure you stick around for the unveiling at the end. We're going to kind of keep this up in wraps right now, but what I'm starting with, if you can see down here on my desk, I have some panels that I've painted up. Now one I've done more ge geometric uh, squares and rectangles, the other one is much more abstract, uh, colorful clouds if you will. And what I want to be able to do with these is use these as a foundation for my final, final view. Now in order for this to work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, our, our mystery ingredient and I want to drizzle it on the surface of each one of these canvases and then we're going to let the rubber cement dry and then what we'll do is we'll put the final layer on here and I'll show you what the end result is. It's pretty, pretty cool. So uh, to begin with, I'm gonna, let me just grab my clouds view here. And uh, I'm working with a fairly fresh bottle of rubber cement. You wanna make sure it has uh, some, some flow. And I'm gonna simply come in here and uh, even though it looks like it's uh, kind of intuitive and perhaps productive to be drizzling rubber cement on my new canvas here, that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in here I'm gonna just start getting some drizzle. I could, you know, I could scoop it out a little bit, make it a little bit faster. I could pour it if that's what I wanted to do. I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to have a little bit of control. Um, I can also come in here and I could dab away at it if that's what I want. But I want to come in here and I want to, in essence, create a bit of a pattern using the rubber cement. And I know it's hard to see on camera, but I'm making kind of a just a a, a webby kind of inclusion of a lot of the different areas of colors in here. And uh, there'll be some spaces as well that are not in there. Let's get a little bit more in here. And all right, that's looking kind of cool. Looking kind of cool. I'm going to grab just a little bit more. And again, this is uh, this can be a little bit messy. And also, when you're working with rubber cement, a uh, well ventilated area. Don't do this in a closet. That's not going to make you happy. All right, so I'm going to work on that uh, one. Let me put it off to the side here. Let me do the same thing to my other piece here. And again, let me just kind of scoop a little. There we go. Let's get some gloop it on here. We're going to kind of go very organic here with whatever we uh, we end up putting on here. There we go. Let's get another blob there. And again, I'm going to Maybe just pour it straight out of the container and get some thicker, thicker lines there. Okay, that's going to be pretty sufficient. Pretty sufficient what I want to be able to do. Okay, so what I have here now is I have here two panels which have been coated with rubber cement. This one's a lot thicker than this one. Again, I want to try some variations and see what kind of results uh, are, end up being produced as a result of what we're doing. Now, I need to wait for the rubber cement to dry. And once I'm done with the rubber cement drying, we're going to put a final coat of paint on top of both of these, and then we're going to reveal our secret. So come on back. All right, welcome back. Now, the rubber cement has had a few hours to dry, and uh, it is still very tacky because rubber cement does that. And I'm not sure how well you can see this on the camera, but there's a you can see where it's dried and it's spread out a little bit. And uh, again, it's very sticky in those areas and will continue to be so. This one's a little bit uh, less, less wide on the more of a web of, of things. But here's what I want to be able to do. As, as beautiful as these uh, backgrounds are, now it's time to cover them up. Now to get the effect that I want to be able to get, I want to be able to put a darker color on the surface. And you know what? Black fits that. So I'm going to work with a basic black, flat black. And what I want to do is paint a layer of black over my rubber cement and paint layers here. And uh, then we'll have a secret reveal. We'll see what comes out. So once again, let me grab my get my black open here. Grab a paintbrush and let's uh, let's dip into this. Now again, we don't have to be uh, uh, you know too, too precise here because all we really want to be able to do is cover up all of the colors that are currently on these panels. And black will do that pretty readily for me. Let me just get in here. And again, I want to just get a kind of a uniform thin layer on here. Now this is a matte black color, which means that it will be it will dry in a matte finish. And that's not going to be a problem for us because I'm going to also show you how we can finish these little panels off and make them a little bit more eye-catching once we get done. 
Now again, I'm coming in here. I can start to see where the uh, rubber cement is very clearly as I come in because the texture is showing up. Again, I'm not sure if you can see that on camera as easily, but uh, from a slight angle you can see the light bouncing off the, the rubber cement lines a little bit differently. And there we go. This is covering up pretty quickly. And it doesn't have to be uh, an incredibly thick amount of paint. That's not the objective here. The objective is just to obscure all the colors we currently have and of course uh, the rubber cement lines that are in here as well. All right, almost done with this guy. There we go. And let me get this covered up as well. And again, I'm just kind of picking up any little traces of color that I think can be obscured. All right, so there is one. Let me shove this out of the way over here. And I'm going to do the same thing for this panel here. Same process. We're going to come in with some basic black on top. I know it seems a shame to cover up all these beautiful colors, but you'll see when we reveal what's going to happen next, what this is going to end up looking like. So come on in, get some paint on all these guys. Let me go different directions just to fill in those little gaps. I'm going to want to smooth this out. I want to make sure I don't have any big blobs of paint anywhere in here. So I'll pick up some of the stuff that looks like it might be a little more spilled. So what I want to do is I want to give this a few minutes to dry. I want to make sure that it's nice and solid. And then when we get back, I'm going to show you the magic reveal. All right, welcome back. Now, as you can see, our panels are dry. Uh, they, are, they are black panels for all intents and purposes, but we know better. We know better. And what I want to be able to do now is I want to take advantage of one of the characteristics of rubber cement, and that is rubber cement is a great tool for being able to glue pieces of paper together, obviously. But it also is one of those things, paradoxically, that's real easy to clean up because all you have to do is wait for it to dry. And then if you take your finger on a piece of paper, let's say, and grab the extra rubber cement that might be have oozed out of whatever you pasted down, it will just roll up into these little balls. Now we're going to take advantage of that characteristic now, and what I want to be able to do is come in here, and I can still feel the, the ridge where the rubber cement is. Now I might start with a little art eraser here. I have a little art gum eraser that might get me going. I want to come in here, and I want to start to pick up some of the elements. You see, what I'm doing here is I'm starting to pick up where the rubber cement is. And what I want to do is I want to move my finger and pick up those lines. So those lines that we put down when we were drizzling the rubber cement on the canvas earlier, this is now being picked up by the little bits of rubber cement as we kind of roll into it. So we're kind of peeling this off as a layer. And what you can see is it's starting to reveal the colors that were underneath. So the rubber cement doesn't stick to the colors. What it does is it picks up the black that we painted over it and removes it. And we've created this perfect mask, if you will. Look at how this black piece right here, hopefully you can, I'll zoom in on that so you can see. But this black piece here has just a perfect line around it, right? So that's been masked in there perfectly. And again, as I kind of grab this, this bit of rubber that's coming off, it allows me to come and start to pick up the other rubber. And I'm going to pick up some other elements in here. And again, I might need to, you know, patiently work on this a little bit, but I'm going to be stretching and using this to kind of pick up some more of the rubber cement. And again, if I look carefully, I can see the rubber cement on my canvas. I can see where it's sticking up, so I know where to go to next. All right, look at that. Now, it, by, by just taking out the rubber cement, again, what we're revealing is the colors that were underneath it. We're getting the, we're not seeing the full blocks of color, but we're getting the effect of those colors peeking through. And that is a really fun piece. That is really exciting. And there we are. I think we cleaned it up. If you see anything that, you know, 
might have a little leftover, she can certainly go in there and do that. Now let's go take a look at the next one as well. We're making a bit of a, a mess with the crumblies. I'm going to grab some of the previous crumblies and see if I can use that to kind of get started on this one. This again, breaking through. There we go. And then once I get started, I can just use my finger. All right, as you can see, it takes a fair amount of elbow grease. So yeah, you're kind of sanding with your fingers. So it might be, uh, it might make sense to use something like rubber gloves, perhaps. I don't have tried that. Uh, but either way, again, the objective here was to see what was left behind when the rubber cement was removed. And again, I'm very excited. The colors that I put down here really made some fun blotches. And uh, together, these two pieces are really kind of fun examples of some easy to do abstracts. And that's really the objective of this entire video is to share with you some fun ways to make art. Doesn't require mad skills. You don't always know what you're gonna get, right? Because the outcome here, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit more pleasantly surprised than I was expecting on both of these with the color combinations. But again, if you plan ahead, you could also paint on the rubber cement, put it in places where you think it's gonna really reveal the most amount of colors and do some really fun things with it. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. Look at that, isn't that really a lot of fun? Uh, suitable for uh, putting some varnish on and hanging out on a wall. But anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. If you like what we did today, guess what? We do something like this every single week. It's not always using rubber cement. Sometimes we use other weird things that we have lying around. But the objective is how can we create some fun and easy abstract art pieces that anyone can do. And I want you to be able to embrace your inner artist and find your own path. And it's fun. It's fun. It's therapeutic. And uh, when you're done, you have something fun, you can hang on the wall. So nothing, nothing to hate about this. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed what we've done here, please feel free to subscribe. Become part of our growing community. We'd love to have you along. Plenty to learn. We drop a video every single week. Anyway, that's what I have for you this week. This is Spider. I hope you have a wonderful time. I'll see you next time.